So last time we have talked about how to make the first two patterns work. So the take screenshot and upload to APFS. Now I'm just going to be briefly mentioning how to generate JSON file and uh, upload that to APFS as well. And then uh, the, the, mo the major focus is going to be the main function right here. So uh, for you to uh, generate a JSON file, um, you have to first of all know the, um, the structure of the JSON file uh, to upload to IPFS. So um, if you take a look at most of the NFT tutorial out there, the, um, the JSON file um, the, the, uh, usually has the following uh, fields, which is the name, description, and image. Image is like a string uh, that pointing to like a, the IPFS storage. So it usually start with IPFS uh, column and then uh, forward slash uh, to forward slash plus that uh, say ID you got uh, from uh, the previous button, which is upload uh, to NFT storage. So um, if you remember, after we did the second button, the CID of that image has already been saved to a game object called the CID. So uh, with that being said, all you need to do is just to make a new JSON data type with the following uh, attributes. And then um, you can just um, um, get the, the CID being stored in that uh, CID object. And then uh, you can just um, and of course, you need to initiate a NFT data type that we just created here. And then you can just um, use NFT data dot image. So for this one, what it's actually doing is it's calling this field. So, so when we do this, we actually assign this string to that image. Um, and then next, we're going to use the JSON utility to dot to JSON file. Uh, yeah, I think you don't need any imports. You just need to call the JSON utility directly. Uh, and then passing that NFT data and making the whole um, data type into a JSON file. And then you will call um, system.io the file, write all the text, and then save it to uh, uh, a place in the cloud. So if you're using WebGL, then you're going to use persistent data pass. Uh, and then you can just name it whatever, and then you save that the JSON data as parameter. And then you will also, you will also want to save uh, the JSON pass. So um, I think at the top, I just uh, create a new private JSON pass uh, variable, and then you just you, you just need to save the pass into that variable. After you generate your JSON file, um, you will need to upload your JSON file to NFT storage. And then this is pretty much the same one as the upload to NFT storage. Uh, I probably should put an image here, but this function is what I use for upload image to NFT storage, and then you can, as you can see, uh, these are pretty much similar to each other. So after you call the generate JSON file, um, which I just covered right here, um, and then you can just say if it's not no or if it's not empty string, then uh, you can use the, the same method uh, in that um, image upload uh, and then pass the JSON pass that we just saved from uh, the last method. And then, and then you'll be able to upload that to the NFT storage. So this is pretty much it for this generic JSON and uh, um, upload to an NFT storage button. And of course, if you go to this method, you will replace the original CID, which has the image, with the JSON file with the ID. So in that way, when you call the CID.txt again, you will be able to fetch the uh, CID for the JSON file, so which we will, we will be using in the next step. Now we have talked about the first three button, and so now we are going to move on to the, the final one, which is the mint function right here. So um, after you have your um, JSON file being uploaded to IPFS, all you need to do is to somehow mint that uh, IPFS uh, address, which is going to be an URL. And uh, I just want to first mentioning how do you actually uh, do a contract. And uh, um, for me, I basically copy this uh, Open Zeppelin uh, smart contract. It's the most basic one that you're ever going to uh, write. As, as you can see, for 
the discount smart contract, it has this award item function where you pass the address of the player and then you pass um, the string, which is a token URL, which is exactly the one we want because we already have the URL for that, uh, for that JSON IPFS. So we are going to pass that uh, IPFS address into here. And then after you uh, just basically copy and paste this whole contract, uh, you can just jump into this tutorial right here and it tells you how to uh, deploy the contracts on RinkyB or uh, other testnets and um, you will get the contract address which we'll be using uh, later as well. And then uh, you only need this part of the tutorial. We are not really care about the part two and part three right now um, because we are going to interact with our smart contract uh, in Unity. Uh, and then this tutorial is mostly for just like a web framework. So, so after you copy and paste this smart contract and then you follow this tutorial and then deploy the smart contract, we will be ready to move on to the next step. Uh, and uh, I will uh, post the two links uh, in the description for these two tutorials. So just let me show you um, what I did. So basically right here, I just copy and paste that smart contract I mentioned before uh, here. And then I use the method from the other tutorial, uh, which is the main uh, slash nft.js. I deployed it to the RinkyB testnet and uh, I got the smart contract address from that. And then what, what you want to do right now is to go to extensions. And then if you type on Solidity and then you want to install this uh, extension by Juan Blanco, and then uh, you will be able to um, go back to your uh, original um, smart contract and you press shift command P, which is the command palette, and just search for contract definition. And then you want to click on the first one, which is the state shop contract definition. And after that, it will generate a contract definition for you. And uh, uh, there is uh, something called avatar NFT definition C sharp. We're not interested in that service .cs. So this is basically the contract um, definition we want to use in our uh, mint function uh, because we could import this uh, whole script uh, into another script. Let's call it uh, mint, uh, mint C sharp. And then uh, what you can do is that after you import this file, you will be able to uh, call the uh, award uh, item function right here and then pass the player and token URL parameter into this function. And then you will be able to interact smart contract within Unity. So let's go back to Unity. And then um, as you can see, uh, I have created a Mint Avatar C Sharp. So for all the imports, you can go to this page and if you go to, uh, and I will also post this to the description, um, you can you can just copy and paste everything and then you can just paste it here. And the only line I've added right here is actually the smart contract definition uh, we have just generated. As you can see, you can see this name is matching with this username. Just make sure that you, are, you also import the C sharp into your uh, uh, script folder in, in Unity. In that way, you can actually use that C sharp in another C sharp script. So let's take a look at uh, this main avatar as NFT. As you can remember, I stored the ZID into uh, a game object. So I also gonna put that game object in here, um, and then uh, so that in that way you can retrieve the ZID from the game object, and then. <clears throat> And then I wrote this uh, mint subtar NFT function, uh, which calls the curl routine function called mint NFT. So for this function right here, uh, you will need to use your own private key and the URL of that uh, of your alchemy to sign the transaction. So in this case, we didn't ask the user to pay for the gas fee. Um, so in order to pay the gas fee, we have to use the uh, private key of the account where you deploy the smart contract and then you need to use the private key of your public account uh, to sign this contract. And this is what this line is for. So it, it involves the API key you got from uh, the Alchemy API and also the private key of your own public account that deploys the smart contract. 
And here, of course, is the smart contract address. And then let's move on to the next line here. Um, uh, so actually, this is a very important line that if you don't use this line, you are not able to interact with the smart contract. So transaction transfer requests that use legacy as default. So after I wrote all the lines, I still couldn't really get it work and it worked right after I add this line. So just make sure, make sure you have add this line into the script. So let's move on to the next one, which is the, um, the actual interaction with the smart contract. So uh, you can just create a new var called transaction message, and then you will be calling this function, which is our award item function. And if you remember, if you go back to the uh, smart contract definition right here, you will see that it also has the, um, the award item function right here. So in this award item function, uh, you will be able to pass the player and the token URL parameters to that function. So let's see. So in order to use this function of that smart contract at definition, you will need to use this import statement where you just import that uh, script into the script and then you will be passing the player and the, the token URI and the front address. So the front address is default. Uh, it's always going to be there no matter what uh, function you're going to use. So the front address is just going to be the public address where you deploy the smart contract. And then it also matches with the uh, private key right here. So these are the same pair. And then, um, and then for the player, I use this account, which is um, the player that's currently in the game. So as you can see, the prefabs.getStream, we can use this uh, function to get the wallet address of the current player. And then for the token URI, you will need to have this prefix right here. So HTTPS uh, slash slash uh, IPFS.io slash IPFS slash and then you can just include that CID text.txt. And this will give you gateway URL that you can just open directly to retrieve your JSON file. So that's it for the small contract function interaction. So for this line right here, it will actually returns the results of uh, the transaction request. Um, and then it will actually sign and send the transaction with the uh, uh, transaction message as well as the contract address. And then after that, you, you are able to get the, the transfer hash by calling this variable dot result. And uh, you can just search for the hash number on ether scan to see if your transaction has been successfully made. So that's pretty much it for the mint um, NFT function. Um, and uh, I'll post all the um, external tutorial link uh, in the description.